Hello, good evening, guys. Welcome for welcome to the good class evening, and thank you for being here. Dirhan, good to see you again. Thank you, teacher. What what you have a beer a bird now bird now? You have a bird? <laughs> 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 You're sick. Yes. Um, more or less, more or less. Almost only a cough. But, but isn't it COVID? No. No, but uh, I, I, I have, I have the test the the, the last week and uh, antigenos, antigenos yeah. test. Okay. But um, the doctor say it's a. Uh, False, positive false. Okay. But I, but I don't know. And, and, and now my wife is the similar symptoms, but the doctor say he ha, she has a pneumonia. Mm. What do you say pneumonia in English? Pneumonia, pneumonia, pneumonia. Wait a second, I don't really recall how to say that. Uh, wait a second. Yeah, pneumonia. 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 Uh -huh. Pneumonia. Because because the doctor say it's a a a, a stay COVID, but tomorrow my wife. She was a uh, uh, test PCR. Mm -hmm. She will take a PCR but, test tomorrow. Uh -huh, yes. And I don't know. I I I say what to say. <clears throat> the test for tomorrow. Okay. So hopefully it's not that, but just in case, right? Yeah. We have to. We have to take care. Because sometimes we don't know, right? But the good thing is, like, we here in the class, we're not together, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's okay. The uh, problem. I I I I miss you. The I miss you. The connection for the old days because my wife is sick, <laughs> and now I take a care of my child. Oh, you're taking care of your children, or you want to only yes. have one? No, two. Children. One, 40, 40 years. 14, 40 or 14? And second, 14. 14 and the second, uh, he has he uh, is, five years old. He is five. He, he. No, and remember that in English, the years he, we say is, the verb to be, no has. So we don't say he has five years, we say he, he. is five years. And right here now, right? Oh, that's your baby, and you're with him, right? Yes. Yeah. He's studying. <laughs> <laughs> Is he studying? No, it's hey, this <laughs> say say hi, our teacher. <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> no. What's his name? Okay. Lucas. Mm, okay. Lucas, the little Lucas. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better, uh, Sirhan, and that you're here with Thank us you. because we only have today's class and tomorrow's class, and that's going to be it, right? So we're almost done. Finish and Thursday. Yeah, we're gonna finish tomorrow. Thursday or Friday? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Okay. We were supposed to finish today, but as I don't know if you remember the one day I didn't have in like no, no, it was no internet connection. It was power. The power went out here. So that was my problem. But that's why we're gonna uh -huh. do tomorrow as well. I hire a survey receipt uh, made for English Cooperativo saying uh, the class is spouse for the moment 
for a month, <coughs> three weeks. Yeah, that's what they're saying now. There is a situation uh, with the scholarships, as I think you know, that you're studying because you have scholarships, okay? There's a problem right now with the scholarships and we have to wait to get more scholarships. So until we get more scholarships, then we have to wait for a little bit. I'm guessing, I'm just guessing that it's gonna be three weeks or at least one month, but it's gonna be quick. What I was telling uh, the students yesterday was that you have to practice um, in that time, because if you don't practice, you're gonna forget, okay? That's what you need to do. And also um, the videos on the platform, on English Corporativo's platform, you can watch the videos again, you can watch the classes again, you can also do the exercises again. You can continue with that because <clears throat> you, you have to practice. That's what I'm telling you. Because if you don't practice, then yeah, that's gonna be the problem when you come back or maybe you won't want to come back and that's gonna be a problem. For the moment, practice my English, see all the uh, series in English and subtitle with subtitles. Subtitles. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. With English too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Like with English is better than Spanish. Okay. Well, that's the information that I have. And as I can see, these days the students they don't want to come to the class anymore. They are like, eh, it's almost over. We don't want to come to classes. Sometimes it takes a while for Marielos to get here, for Milton to get here. Well, Marielos there. <laughs> um, for Milton to get here and the other students. We're gonna be waiting on them, but um, we're, I'm gonna continue with yesterday's topic, guys. Yesterday we were talking about some uh, idioms, remember? So the first idiom that we were practicing was under the weather. Can you tell me the meaning of under the weather? What is the meaning of under the weather? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Marielos. Welcome to the class. I I thought you weren't coming. Hey, excuse me. I was uh, talking about tax. This this week is the last. To I am. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Like yeah. the rent, right? Yes. Uh -huh. okay. This is the That's last week the for question. the rent. Excuse me. This is the last week for the rent. Yes, um, May 2nd is the last day. May the 2nd is the last day to present the yes. rent. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. This is the last year, <clears throat> that's sad, because this is the last year that I'm gonna get paid for the rent because I didn't make enough money last year. But since okay. like starting this year, I will have to pay. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> I have to pay. I, I uh, made uh, the rent, but uh -huh. I don't pay again. Yeah, <laughs> I don't pay again. Uh, okay. Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah. So because I'm when we make pay. something like around, I don't know what, you have to pay rent. But because in my case, like I was only teaching classes online, and with that, it's not enough money to pay the rent. It's just yeah. like with what I pay, and sometimes they give back money. But now, starting this year, I have to pay the rent. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that. Okay. Well, welcome, Marielos. I I am happy that you're here. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so we're okay, recording. Your question. Uh huh. Uh, is um, what is it? Uh, uh, about the the idiomatic expression. Mm -hmm. is under the weather uh -huh. is uh, being sick excellent thank you Marielos for your participation yes it's being sick let's see um, Boris can you tell me the meaning of the ball is in your court <clears throat> oh, I don't remember teacher sorry don't remember no okay and okay well but 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 i think you were here in yesterday's class weren't you 
Yeah, but my internet is difficult and disconnected uh, sometimes. Okay, but today is better or is the same as yesterday? Today is better. Okay, okay, okay. Well, okay, Boris, thank you. So, um, Alex, do you remember what is the ball is in your court? <clears throat> Mm, teacher, I am a driver. Um, don't, don't speak. Oh, you're driving? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> it seems like everybody is busy, but I'm glad you're here. I'm happy that you're here. So we're going to recall to what we saw yesterday. Under the weather is to feel ill, meaning to feel sick. Instead of saying, I feel bad, you're going to say, I'm under the weather, okay? So mm, today I, I'm feeling under the weather. That means that you are sick. You are feeling sick. <clears throat> Number two is the ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. Meaning, this part is meaning that it's up to you. It is your choice. To do something is your choice, okay? And this is more used in sports, okay? But it's applied to, to life, to real life. For example, if I'm saying, okay, guys, now <clears throat> we're about to be advanced level. And if you want to learn English, the ball is in your court, okay? That's a good example where we can apply it. Then I have spilled the beans. That was really easy. And it was like the one in Spanish, soltar la sopa to we give away a secret, like to say something that you weren't supposed to say or say something that so someone is saying like, hey, spill the beans, I wanna know, okay? So that's so that la sopa. <clears throat> Break a leg is to wish someone good luck. So if you are saying, hey, um, someone is going to a job interview and you're like, hey, break a leg. That means that you're wishing that person good luck. Even though break a leg is, Negative if it was literal, because nobody wants to break a leg. But yeah, that's the meaning in idioms. And it's important that you know. For example, imagine that you are going to, <clears throat> you're going somewhere or you're doing something and someone says, hey, break a, break a leg. You're gonna be like, do you want me to break a leg? Why do you want me to break a leg? You're gonna be like, yeah, that's weird. but break a leg meaning wishing you good luck then we were like uh like um who was it ah miguel said que alguien se ha muerto te le va a jalar las patas no <laughs> pull someone's leg <laughs> that's the meaning of play a practical joke so it's like hey relax take it easy i'm just pulling your leg okay it's not true i'm just teasing you right? Something like that. Sat on the fence, it was to be undecided about something, okay? So I don't know, mm, I'm on the fence about it. I'm on the fence, meaning that I don't know. I, I, I'm, either I can do it or I can do it. I don't know what to do. Then the last one we saw, <clears throat> it was through thick and thin, through thick and thin. And it, this was like to be loyal, no matter what the situation is. And this is, we can say this to families or we can say this to best friends. And we say through thick and thin. This means that you are for another person. Like it doesn't matter what happened. I'm next to you and I'm gonna be your friend and I'm gonna, be, and I'm gonna support you. Okay, that's what, that's what it means. Then, the new one that we have right there is once in a blue moon. Now, what do you think is the meaning of once in a blue moon? I don't know, teacher. Well, what do you think? Just trying to guess. What, what do you think is the meaning here? Once in a blue moon. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah. You saw it already, it doesn't matter. 
<laughs> you saw the meaning. It means rarely, rarely. That something happens very rarely. For example, that will be um, one student comes to the class once in a blue moon, right? That's something that happens very, very, very rarely. Something is not very common that happens. Another thing that I can we can say about, I don't think, well, let me think about it. I don't think there is an equivalent in Spanish for once in a blue moon, or is it? Can you think of one? Nope. No, I don't know. I, I don't I don't think there is one in Spanish. But we say this, for example, we have a friend that we don't get together too often because maybe we are busy, even though we live in the same city, but we are busy. Okay. So what we do is um, we get together once in a blue moon. It's very rare that we get together, but we do it. Maybe once a year, once every two years, or I don't know, once in a blue moon. Yeah, is it understandable? Yep. Wait a second. Is the best thing since sliced bread. Do you know what is sliced bread? Do you know the meaning of that? Sliced bread? Soft bread. Sliced bread, do you know what is the meaning? Meaning? Yeah, sliced bread is pan de caja. Sliced bread. Sliced bread. Sliced son tajadas. Yeah, sliced is tajadas. So, pan en tajadas? Es obviously pan de caja. So, is the best thing since sliced bread. Esto es lo mejor que ha pasado desde que inventaron el pan de caja. So, what do you think is the meaning of this? What do you think it can be the meaning? No. No? No. Okay. No idea. idea. It's a good idea. Maybe. It's really, really, really good. Okay. So for example, you go to a restaurant and you try something new. You're like, wow, this is really good. This is the best thing since sliced bread. That's what you're saying. Okay. Like this is the top, the top of it. Okay, maybe you can use it, it's right there. Slide bread must have revolution, revolution inside life in England because it's since been used as the ultimate benchmark for things that are great. We love it almost as much as tea. Oh, so in England, they love the sliced bread almost as much as, thing, uh, as tea. You know that in England, they love to take tea. They love to drink tea. Yeah. They love, they love to, to drink tea. In England, they always are drinking tea. Like La Hora del Te, they love to drink tea. I don't know why, but they do. I love coffee. <laughs> That's because we're Latin people. Really and the people from yeah. Latin America, they prefer coffee all the time. Coffee. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. Samita. <laughs> that's why, that's why, oh my goodness. I'm, I'm on a diet. That's why we, uh, the, the pan dulce is the best. That's, that will be for <laughs> us, right? It's the best thing since, since pan dulce. That yeah. will be the best for us. <laughs> since, Teacher, it's the best thing since time. <laughs> Teacher, it's, 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 it's so similar. For yesterday, I saw the series and the title, title for I the know. series is a uh, rock hard place. Mm -hmm. And understand because the title rock and hard place. 
en the middle of the Spanish is entre la estrada y la pared. Correct, correct. So they were using idioms to say that. Mm -hmm. Rock and and what, series, what series are you watching? Uh, call Better Soul. Better Call Soul. Better Call Soul. Yay. Yes. And so did you watch the, Breaking Bad? Yes. It, I think the that's the of... best, the best. That's the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> is is it right now in Netflix is the last season, season six? Yeah, in the last season, yeah. I I I, I watched um Breaking Bad, but I haven't had the time to watch um uh, Better Call Soul, but I want to watch it. Yeah, that's so sure I want to watch Call it. Call Soul uh, uh, its series is uh many stuff. Or on uh, what do you say? Uh, relevancia Relevant. the breaking ball, breaking ball. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And right now in this in this season is very 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 interesting for for what the in union union for the boot series. Oh, if they, they now they are joining both series. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. I, I I have to watch it. I think I have to watch it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna do that. <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna continue, and the next one is take it with a pinch of salt. Take it with a pinched, pinched of salt. So, what do you think is the meaning of take it with a pinch? Of soul. Take a little, oh, take a little me. Oh, in Spanish, toma un poco, toma un poquito. Mm, maybe, but no. Take it with a pinch of salt, no. Mm, no. Remember, no, with a pinch of salt. Maybe if you say, take it. Take a pinch of salt, yes, tomo un poquito. But no, in this case, it's take mm -hmm. it with a pinch of salt. Do you think you get the idea, guys? Marielos? Boris? Um, it's like uh, incomodo. I don't know how to say incomodo. No. Uncomfortable? Uncomfort un uh, uncomfortable. Uh, uncomfortable. 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 Mm -hmm. So uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> okay. No <idea. laughs> it's okay. Boy. It's okay, boy. Yeah, take it with a pinch of salt is don't take it too serious. Okay. So it's not a Don't big deal. It. Don't take it too hard. Like it, it's not, it's not a big deal. Just relax. Like, so take it easy. Take it easy. Like take it with ambition to also. No, take it easy is more. Yeah, take it easy. Like yeah, something oh, like that. Yeah, to like that. Like don't take it too seriously. You see? It's I like heard don a whole lot. Exactly. <laughs> 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 El don a whole lot that we understand in, in El Salvador. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard that elephants can fly now, but Sam often makes up stories. So I take everything he says with a pinch of salt. So I don't take it like really serious. That, that, that's not too serious. For example, people. Bueno, eso no debería ser así. But people right now, you know that the planet Plan, planet Earth, um, it's gonna collapse pretty soon because we're not taking care of it. So maybe we have only five years for that or around that um, to live in the planet <laughs> because we're destroying the planet. So, but right now people, they are taking it with a pinch of salt. They're like, meh, tenemos cinco años todavía. So they are taking it with a pinch of salt. They shouldn't, but they are, okay? They are not taking it seriously, but they should take it seriously. You get the idea? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then, oh, come rain or shine. 
come rain or shine. What do you think is the meaning of that? Come rain or shine. What is rain? Lluvia. And what is shine? Yeah. So come rain or shine? Actually, we have one like this one in Spanish. What is? De todas formas, no sé, como que fuera. Sorry. It's like a, a phrase in Spanish. De cualquier forma. Yeah, meaning de cualquier forma. It has to happen. Yes, that's true, Boris. Thank you. It has to happen, no matter what. But in Spanish, we say, you don't know what we say in Spanish? Mm. Llueva, truene, o relampague. Relampague. Exactly. Ah, okay. Come right on line is uh, llueva, Truene o relampaje. Correct. Come rain or Come shine, rain. meaning no matter what. You guarantee yeah. to do something regardless of the weather or any other situation that might arise. I'll be at your full but football game. Come rain or shine. Yo voy a ir a ver oh. el partido de fútbol. Llueva. Truene o relampague. Teacher, could you share this screen or your presentation in WhatsApp group? I'm gonna send you the link, but, but we, when we finish, okay. <laughs> because if I send you the link right now, you're gonna know the meaning. <laughs> okay, now let's go with the number 12. Can you please read number 12, Marielos? Excuse me? Can you read number 12? Number 12, go down in flames. Mm -hmm. Go down, thank you. Go down in flames. What do you think is the meaning, guys? Don't worry. Don't worry? Go down in flames? I think. Okay, okay. Other thoughts? Nobody? Bajo fuego. Bajo fuego. Mm. Mm. No. <laughs> Go down in flames. I think there's one equivalent in Spanish. Let me think about it. I don't think there's one in Spanish. Or is it? Okay, here is the situation. Maybe you can help me think about one in Spanish. Go down in flames means to do something grown but epic, like fallar epicamente. How do we say that in Spanish? I think there's one in Spanish for that. Fallar epicamente, like te luciste. I don't know how they what they say. But you get the idea? Go down in flames. Like this phrase is fairly obvious. The, that exam. Como los grandes. Fallar como los grandes or something like that. I think, I think there's one. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Uh -huh. To fail spectacularly. Like you did it. You did it really, really como, good. It's a similar como la regaste. Yeah. No. But, <laughs> but la regaste pero con premio. Like, so, so el rey de los que la riegan. Something like that. If you want to say something like that. Me pasé en la vía de leche. That's how they say it, Marielos. Down, down in flames. Ah, dice, se pasé en la olla de leche. Dice. That's what, that's when they do something wrong, pero así como la regaron épica, ¿verdad? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what we say, maybe. Oh, 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 but, oh, but, but, but I want a question. This as a sentence is for uh, informal dialogue or? Not actually, no, no, no. Okay, so idioms, when you 
for example, are watching series, but when you are, I don't know, like many, many, many other times in movies, many, in the, many the, common, the common language, the common language. Yeah, and that is to sound more native because when you do it like that, you're gonna sound more native, okay? You're gonna be like, um, how can I say this? Like, can you, hey, uh, Sinha, please, can you help me with this? It's really difficult. And you're gonna see like, ah, it's okay, piece of cake, right? It's easy for me to do it. Okay. But you can say it in informal dialogues and you can also say it in formal dialogues. But formal dialogues, meaning that you're speaking to your boss or you're speaking to your employees, or it is just like a relaxed talking. But I don't know it's if no you problem. have to if you have to talk to if you have to talk to the president. I don't know. <laughs> that one I don't know. So yeah, okay. but it's really present in English, like in Spanish, right? Like uh, mire, profe, yo venía aquí temprano y aquí había apartado este asiento y por qué este otro se sentó. Ah, camarón, que se duerme. Ni tengo que decir el resto, because you know what it already means, right? Camarón, que se duerme. Okay. Right? And that's what they say in English, right? Like, mm, you lost your shot. Your shot. That's, that's how they say it. Now, let's continue here. You can say that again, meaning that something is true. Generally, excla exclaimed agreement when a friend says, Ryan Reynolds is gorgeous. You can reply, you can say that again. For example, this one is very used. This one is very, very used because I have used it and I have heard people using it. Like someone says something that you agree with that and it's true. So you're like, hey, you can say that again. Meaning that, hey, what you just said right now, it's true. It's very, very true. And I agree with you. For example, um, let's see. Oh, today the weather was really hot. Hey, you can say that again, right? Yes, it's true. It was really hot. That's what you're trying to say. Or for example, the English exam was really easy. You can say that again, right? <laughs> that meaning that is true. Meaning that is true. That's what it means. Now, um, Sirhan, can you please help me read in number 14? 14, C eyes to eye. C eye to eye, okay. What do you think it means, guys? I obviously is this. So what it will be C eye to eye? But it's not like to pay eye for eye, like in Spanish, no, paro, no it's mm -hmm. not that. What is C eye to eye? Nobody? Me veo en tus ojos. Me veo en tus ojos. Mm, yeah. <laughs> But let's try to think about it. Like looking someone to the eyes. Looking someone to the eyes can be. There it is. To agree you completely. Those when you reveal something. Is mm -hmm. to agree completely. So we're not suggesting a starting context to see eye to eye with someone is to agree with the point they are making. Okay, so if I'm, I agree with you, I say, yeah, I see that eye to eye. For example, you say, I think um, this person is jealous. I can see that eye to eye, right? Like I can see that eye to eye, lo veo. Exactly, that's what I'm doing. Jump on the bad wagon, bad wagon, what it means. Jump on the bandwagon. Hey, what Corey. is bandwagon? What is jump? Saltar. What is jump? Saltar. Okay, Salto. so the bandwagon, it's... Saltar sobre el, sobre, los, sobre el vagón de tren? Mm, not really. 
Well, it was bandwagon. It's like a carrito, bandwagon. Yeah, like a bandwagon. Take the risk, maybe. Take a risk. Let me see. Como tomar un riesgo. No. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example and you can tell me. TikTok, it's really about jumping on the bandwagon. What was repeat, teacher? TikTok is about jumping on the bandwagon. Have you ever used TikTok? No. TikTok is a platform like yeah. you do, oh. like, like it's a social, yeah, for videos. And what they do on TikTok is they follow trends, something that is yeah. popular. So people follow the trend. For example, there is an audio and people are dancing with that audio and they do the specific moves. So that is jumping on the bandwagon. Following a trend, you see it there? It means following yeah. a trend. When a person joins- una, una Exactly, joins in with something popular or does something just because it's cool. See this branch past example. Branch past example, base, base example, I'm sorry. She doesn't even like avocado on toast. She's just jumping on the bandwagon. Ni siquiera le gusta el aguacate con tostada. Pero está siguiendo, está... Como diríamos en español, ¿dónde va Vicente? Va toda la gente. That's what we would say, something like that. As right as rain. As right as rain. So if I say, this is as right as rain. As right as rain. That means perfect. Is something that is perfect. You see there. This is perfect. Perfect. As rain. For example, as rain. another way, way weather based idiom. But this one is slightly trick, trickier. We moaned about the rain, but the rain. As the but right as rain is actually positive comment. I'm as right as rain. Maybe exclaim with glee when you ask if everything is okay and it is. So, are you feeling good today? As right as rain. Okay, maybe you can say that. How are you feeling today? As right as rain. Yes. That's right. Instead of saying. Hey, how are you feeling today? Good. Instead of saying good, you will say as right as rain. Wait a second. Okay, as right as rain. Now, oops, sorry. Beat around the bush. This one is really good. To beat around the bush. What is it? What do you think it is? To beat around the bush. Y golpear alrededor del arbusto. What do you think it is? Actually, there's one equivalent in Spanish. Stop. What is it? No, el grano. What is it? Yes, Miguel? Ir al grano. Actually, the opposite. No, ir al grano, perdón. Exactly, exactly. In Spanish, we That's say, exactly, Marielos. That's what we say in Spanish. Deja de andarte por las ramas. ¿Qué querés decir? Right? Stop beating around the bush. Say what you want to say. That's the meaning. Exactly, guys. Avoid saying something. Beating around the bush is when you speak nonsense. Avoiding a question or something else, right? because you don't want to express your opinion or answer truthfully, okay? Entonces, andarse por las ramas. That's what it means, exactly, that's what it means. 
Number 18. This, this one I told you. I taught you this one. I, I, I don't know if you remember, but I told you what the meaning of this one is hit the sack. You remember it? No. I remember you told us, but I don't remember. <laughs> but you remember yeah. it, I told you. Yeah, you, you told us. Yeah. Hit the sack means go to bed. Oh, yeah. Hey, goodbye. I'm going to hit the sack. You see, go to bed. Go to the bed. idiom is super sack. easy to learn. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I mean, I'm exhausted. It's time for me to hit the sack. This idiom is super easy to understand and to learn. Miss the boat. What is the boat? Bote. Eh, exactly. balsa. Balsa, balsa. In Spanish, we have something that is very similar to this one. Miss the boat. Perdiendo la balsa. <laughs> well, but in Spanish, we don't say the boat. We say another mean of transportation. But we also use Carreta. the mean of transportation, no? Tren. Tren. What? Exactly. Perder el tren. Se te va a ir el tren. Ah, no, ya se Miss te fue el tren. Perdiste la oportunidad. It's too late. Ya es tarde. It's too late. Se me fue el tren. Use this me this when you when you let an opportunity or deadline pass a, pass by. I forgot to apply for that study program. Now I missed the boat. Oh, 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 ese barco ya zarpó. ¿Ya han escuchado ese? Yeah. Ese barco yes. ya zarpó. So ya no se puede hacer nada. We can't do anything about it. Ese barco ya zarpó. Next one. By the skin of your teeth. By the skin of your teeth. La piel de tu diente. And actually, we do have one similar in Spanish. By the skin of your teeth. Yeah, we have one in Spanish. Uno unía en tus zapatos. Mm, no. We have one that is very, very, very similar. But we don't say teeth. Del we don't say teeth. Del, del diente al labio. No, 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 no. We say that in Spanish. Look at this. This is my clue. Pelo en la sopa. No. <laughs> It means just barely, justito, Uy, yeah. por un just, pelito. Just, uh, <laughs> by the skin of your teeth. Of your teeth, okay? So this, by the skin of your teeth. It means por un pelito. Phew, I passed the, that exam by the skin of my teeth. Hopefully you're, you'll ace your exams, but if you only pass, you can wipe out this item okay few i passed that exam by the skin of my teeth meaning hey pass this exam pero por un pelito right that's what we say so when you say that in spanish it's my, imagine this ustedes están hablando con una persona que habla inglés so they speak english y entienden un poquito español a little bit of spanish and you say bueno que acabado yo regalado no se le busca el diente <laughs> gonna be like, what? What? So now imagine saying, Te salvaste por un pelito. And they are gonna be like, Por un pelito? What do you mean? Because they say, By the skin on your teeth. Ya ven que la, 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 la pielcita que tienen los dientes hace una cosita así, sencilla, ¿verdad? Bien delicada. De hecho, si están cepillando, puede sacar sangre. Yeah, you can do that. So it's really, 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 um, uh, how did, ah, oh my goodness, I blocked my mind. Slim, but no, thick and thick and thin, thin, thin. 
it's really thin. It's really thin. It's really thin. Okay. And remember, I was I was remembering that by always through thick and thin, through thick and thin, right? Through thick and thin. Another one that is not there because that's the last one that is there. I'm gonna copy the, the thing and I'm gonna send it to you. I'm gonna send it here. So if you can, please copy this. It's there. It's right there, okay? That's the link yeah. to that page. Now, Thank you. there's another one that they say very often that is the elephant in the room. Have you ever heard that one? And they use that one a lot in series, movies. The elephant in the room. Address the elephant in the room. Do you get the idea, no? No. So address, like did he say, uh, address the elephant in the room. So what? how is an elephant? An elephant is small or is big? A big. big. It's really big, right? So when there is a problem, there's a situation, like a difficult situation, and people are like, they are speaking about other things. They are going around other topics. Let, let, uh, let me think about one example that can be really clear for this. Um, wow. Vaya, imagínense que meten preso un familiar de ustedes. Ya que ahorita eso, ¿verdad? <laughs> imagínense que meten preso un familiar. Y llega un tío a la casa de ustedes y dice, buenas, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Bien, que aquí están, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo entonces qué? Y se empiezan a hablar de un montón de cosas. Nadie habla el tema que se tiene que hablar. So, someone says, are we going to talk about the elephant in the room? Vamos a hablar del elefante en la habitación. That means, hey, hay un problema bien grande. Todos sabemos que está aquí. No se puede ignorar porque es tan enorme. Vamos a hablar de eso. That's what it means. The elephant in the room is a big situation and maybe people are not talking about it. So we say, hey, are we going to talk about the elephant in the room? Se ha peleado con la esposa o el esposo. Ahora en otros temas. Hey, are we going to talk about the elephant in the room? <laughs> Because we know there is a problem, right? We know there is a problem, but we're just not talking about it. Okay? Well, Let me, well, I think that was those ones. Okay, elephant in the room. Oh, raining cats and dogs. Remember the meaning of raining cats and dogs? Raining cats and dogs. Raining very strong. Yeah, it's raining, raining. it's raining, yes. With lightnings, with thunders. It's re really, really, really bad. It's raining really bad. Okay, well, It's now. Dogs. What is it, Alex? I hear rain, cats, and dogs. <laughs> really? It's raining cats and dogs there? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Here in Usulutani, it's really dry. Like, hmm? no. I, I wish it was raining. I thought it was going to be raining. I thought it was going to be raining. Well, let's watch this video. And then we're going to do some practice and we're going to leave it there. Uh, Hi, welcome back. Let me ask you something. Learning English is easy, isn't it? I thought so. Tag questions for opinions. Affirmative statement plus negative tag. Health insurance is really expensive, isn't it? There are lots of criminals in the city, aren't there? Graffiti makes everything look ugly, doesn't it? Colleges should provide daycare, shouldn't they? Negative statement plus affirmative tag. Child care isn't cheap, is it? There aren't enough police, are there? People don't care about our city, do they? You can't find affordable child care, can you? I will begin the explanation telling you when to use tag questions. We use tag questions when we expect someone to agree with us or when we're asking for confirmation. 
This is how tau questions work. When a statement is affirmative, the tau question is negative. For example, learning English is easy, isn't it? Learning English is a positive statement. And isn't it is a tau question in negative. We may also do it the other way around. Negative statement, affirmative tau question. Childcare isn't cheap, is it? I also want to explain that when we use be as the main verb, be is also used in the question. Similarly, we use the same model in the main clause and the tag. For example, we should pay our taxes, shouldn't we? However, simple present and past verbs use the auxiliary verb in the tag. For example, graffiti makes everything look ugly, doesn't it? You found affordable childcare, didn't you? Hi, I'm sure you understood this topic, no. didn't you? In case you didn't, feel free to ask your teacher and watch the explanation if needed. Okay, that questions, that's a topic that I really like and I really use them a lot. That question is, you're going to say, you say uh, in a statement, right? You say in a statement and you want to confirm that. And you're going to confirm that by asking the opposite. For example, English is really is, and I'm using is, so the question is going to be with is, but negative. So English is really easy, isn't it? Like, on no así, right? That's what I'm saying. English is really easy, isn't it? If I don't have the verb to be or a modal verb, I'm going to use don't or doesn't as an auxiliary. For example, um, you learn, oh, you don't, you don't learn English, do you? Do not learn English, or see? You don't learn English, do you? So what I'm using is, I'm saying the statement in affirmative or negative, and the question at the end, it's gonna be the opposite. Now again, let's think about another example. Um, we should connect to the class, shouldn't we? But in this case, I'm using the should as a modal verb, so it's helping me. If I don't have the verb to be, I don't have uh, another verb, and I have a modal verb, then the modal verb is the one that I'm going to use to ask. So, I could go to the party, couldn't I? Yo podría ir a la fiesta, o no, o no podría. That's what I'm doing. Like asking, I'm saying a statement, and then I'm, I'm asking in the opposite way. Let's do some writing examples. I, no, you were really happy yesterday, weren't you? And you see, I'm asking with the verb that I'm using in the statement. You were really happy yesterday, weren't you? Think about another one. You work in that company. In this case, because I have a verb and I don't have the verb to be, and I don't have the, the yeah, a model or an auxiliary. So what I'm going to use the, in this case? Didn't you? Hmm? Didn't you? Didn't you, exactly. Very easy to use. Didn't you? And if you see, I'm respecting the tense. If I use the past tense here, I'm going to use the past tense here as well. Let's do another example. We should 
sleep at least seven hours a day. But in this case, I'm using should, right? I'm using should. That's my auxiliary, should. Sorry about that, that seems weird. Should. We should sleep at least seven hours a day. Now, the opposite to us will be? Shouldn't you? Shouldn't you? Look at the subject. What is the subject? Shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? Okay, shouldn't we? Now, I want you guys to send me one of these examples to the chat. Just do one example and send it to the chat with tag questions. That's the topic, tag questions. Remember, the first part is going to be a statement. The second part is going to be the question. Yes, that's good, Boris. Exactly, Miguel. Um, Sirhan, your statement should be, you saw that movie, or you saw that movie again, didn't you? Okay. We are going to finish on Thursday. Aren't we? Yeah, exactly. That's the attitude. Yeah, very good. So those are tag questions. Tag questions are used. I'm sleeping a lot. Didn't I? No. I was sleeping a lot. Was is your verb there. Okay. So what you're, what, what you're going to say is, I was sleeping a lot. Wasn't I? Okay. Wasn't I? Because you're going to ask with the, the verb. Okay. The tag questions are just to confirm something that we were saying. Just confirmation questions. That's tag questions. Okay, guys, that will be it for today. And I will see you tomorrow in the last class. One night, right? I will see you. Good night, Excellent. teacher. Bye-bye. Nice. Have good a good night. night. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, Take care. Take care.